let's talk about climate. Our learning objectives here are to familiarize yourself with the notion of black body. Familiarize yourself with the fact that the sun and the solid earth are black bodies. Familiarize yourself with the notion of black body spectrum, including the black body spectra of the sun and the earth. Familiarize the construction of energy balancing equations in the context of climate model. Understand why the Earth without atmosphere will be too cool. Understand why the Earth as an opaque atmosphere will be too hot. Here are the fundamentals of climate physics. The exchange of heat between the Sun and the Earth is the main driver of the climate model. As we described in the previous chapter, this heat exchange mechanism is the radiation. It is carried out through electromagnetic radiation exchange. So we will start by describing the fundamental laws of radiation exchange before using them to predict the ground temperature and to describe greenhouse effects. Let's talk about the first law of radiation. Let's start with light traveling in time through space. At some point, the light hits matter. Let's idealize the problem and assume that the matter can vibrate. It turns out that if the wavelength of the light is equal to the wavelength of the matter, the matter can absorb the light and warm it. Let's repeat this. At some point, the light hits matter. Let's idealize the problem and assume that the matter can vibrate. It turns out that if the wavelength of the light is equal to the wavelength of the matter, the matter can absorb the light and warm up. But this matter can also emit light. It turns out that any form of matter that has a temperature greater than the absolute zero temperature is going to be able to emit light. So we have our first law of radiation. All bodies or all matter with temperatures above zero degrees Kelvin or absolute zero emit electromagnetic radiation. Let's discuss black body. Suppose we have an object that has oscillations at all frequencies, that is, all wavelengths. We call it black body. So a black body is an ideal body which absorbs all radiation incident on it and reflects none. It is also the most efficient emitter of radiation. The concept of black body was introduced by Kirchhoff in 1860. The light that comes from a black body is called black body spectrum. The black body spectrum is represented by the intensity versus wavelength or frequency. Let's talk about the solid earth and sun. The solid earth is a good example of black body. It can oscillate at any frequency. The sun is also another good example of black body. Because of the importance of these two black bodies in climate system, we found it useful to familiarize ourselves with physical properties of black bodies. Actually, the black body spectrum is a cornerstone in the study of quantum mechanics. It is the analysis of black body spectra that led to the discovery of the field of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics provides a complete explanation of the mechanism of radiation from very long wavelengths to very short wavelengths. 
whereas continuum mechanics or classical mechanics is correct only for long wavelengths such as infrared and visible radiation. Here we talk about black body spectrum in classical mechanics. At a given temperature, T, in Kelvin, a given wavelength, lambda, and by using continuum mechanics arguments, the electromagnetic spectrum of a black body is given by Rayleigh Jean's law. C is the speed of light. I is the spectral radiance of electromagnetic radiation, also known as the intensity of black body radiation. And K is the Boltzmann constant. Keep in mind that we are using Kelvin scales here. Here are illustrations of spectra intensity distribution of black body radiation as a function of wavelengths for different temperatures. The red curve is close to what the sun emits. Increasing the temperature increases the intensity at all wavelengths. The total area under the curve increases as temperature increases, corresponding to increased emission at each wavelength and in total as the object becomes hotter. Maximum intensity shifts to shorter wavelengths with increasing temperatures. The classical mechanics predicts the so-called ultraviolet catastrophe, which means that an infinite amount of energy being radiated at high frequencies or short wavelengths is way off from what was predicted. We will discuss these points later. The total area under the curve corresponds to the energy emitted by the black body. So the energy emitted by a black body under Rayleigh Jean's law goes to infinity as the wavelengths decrease. That is the prediction of classical mechanics. The actual measurements show that this prediction is way off and this wrong prediction is known as the ultraviolet catastrophe. Quantum mechanics corrects this problem by saying that energy is not continuous. It comes in chunks. At long wavelengths, these chunks are very small and close together. So we can describe the energy of radiation at these wavelengths as continuous. That is the case for both infrared and visible radiation. Continuum mechanics is a good approximation in these cases. When we get to X-rays and gamma rays, the energy chunks are wide apart, and continuum mechanics is no longer valid. Notice that increasing the temperature increases the intensity at all wavelengths. Making the object hotter causes it to emit more radiation across the entire spectrum. Notice also that increasing the temperature causes the peak intensity to shift to a shorter wavelength. The higher the temperature, the shorter the wavelength of the peak of the spectrum. Let's talk about black body radiation in quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics corrects the ultraviolet catastrophe by saying that energy is not continuous. It comes in chunks. At long wavelengths, these chunks are very small and close together. So we can describe the energy of radiation at these wavelengths as continuous. That is the case for both infrared and visible radiation. Continuum mechanics is a good approximation in these cases. When we get to X-rays and gamma rays, the energy chunks are wide apart and continuum mechanics is no longer valid. By postulating that energy is not continuous, Planck arrives at the following formula. 
This formula is known as Planck's Law. It does not suffer from the ultraviolet catastrophe and agrees well with the experimental data. One can verify that Rayleigh Jean's Law is indeed the long wavelength approximation of Planck's Law by using the Taylor series of exponential. That is the following. In the limit of very high temperatures or long wavelengths, the exponential term in the Planck law becomes small, and the exponential is well approximated with the Taylor polynomial's first order term. That is the following. By substituting this expression in Planck's law, we can verify that Planck's law reduces to Rayleigh Jean's law for long wavelengths. Here is a picture of black body spectra, but with wavelengths in log scale. Notice the change of shape of the curves. In the second law of radiation, Stefan Boltzmann law tells us that the total emission over all the wavelengths is integral of under the Planck's curves. This formula is very important for the Earth energy balance equation. Notice that we have used the Kelvin temperature scale instead of the Celsius or Fahrenheit scales in these derivations and throughout this lecture. So that the temperature at power 4, for example, can preserve negative temperatures on the Celsius and Fahrenheit scales in our formulation. Let's repeat this. Notice that we have used the Kelvin temperature scale instead of the Celsius or Fahrenheit scales in these derivations and throughout this lecture so that the temperature at power 4, for example, can preserve negative temperatures on the Celsius and Fahrenheit scales in our formulation. Notice also that the maximum of the intensity shifts to shorter wavelengths as the black body temperatures increase. The wavelength at which this spectrum peaks is inversely proportional to the temperature. These two observations yield the so-called Stefan-Boltzmann law and Wien's law. So, the third law of radiation can be derived as follows. We first differentiate Planck's intensity function and set the derivative equal to zero. That is the following. We then yield the wavelength of peak emission for a black body at temperature T, which is the following. This equation is the Wien's displacement law. Let's talk about the sun and earth radiation. Here are black body spectra of the sun and the earth. Sun emits way more radiation than the earth. 99% of sunlight has wavelengths less than 4 microns. This is known as short wave radiation, despite the fact that it is a black body. 99% of earth light has wavelengths more than 5 microns. This is known as long wave radiation, despite the fact that the solid Earth is also a black body. Sun emits way more radiation than the Earth. There is very little overlap through solar, or short wave, and the Earth, or long wave. Here is a picture of a black body spectrum of the Sun and the Earth in log scale. Let's now talk about the fourth law of radiation. The atmosphere is a black body, but individual gases in the atmosphere are not black bodies because they absorb and emit only at a limited wavelength range, which is the infrared wavelength range. Let's repeat this. 
The atmosphere is a black body, but the individual gases in the atmosphere are not black bodies because they absorb and emit only at a limited wavelength range, which is the infrared wavelength range. In other words, greenhouse gases are not black bodies, but their behavior can nonetheless be understood by applying the radiation laws derived for black bodies. For this purpose, it is useful to define the emissivity and the absorptivity of a body as emission wavelength. At any given wavelength, emissivity is defined as the ratio of the intensity of the radiation emitted by the body under consideration, as shown here. The absorptivity is the fraction of the incident monochromatic intensity that is absorbed by body under consideration, as shown here. A body which is not a black body, that is, any gas, will absorb a fraction of the radiation incident upon it. It will also emit a fraction of the radiation that a black body would emit at this wavelength. The fourth law of radiation states that the fractional absorptivity equals the fractional emissivity at all wavelengths. That is the following. Materials that are strong absorbers at a given wavelength are also strong emitters at that wavelength. Similarly, weak absorbers are also weak emitters. The fourth law of radiation is also known as Kirchhoff's law. In summary, all bodies or all matter with temperatures above zero degrees Kelvin or absolute zero emit electromagnetic radiation as stated in the first law of radiation. Planck's law describes the intensity as a function of wavelength for each temperature. Stefan Boltzmann's law describes the total emission over all wavelengths, that is, the second law of radiation. Wien's displacement law estimates the peak emission wavelengths, which is the third law of radiation. Kirchhoff's law describes the absorption and emission of non-black bodies, including greenhouse gases. That is the fourth law of radiation. Let's now talk about climate system. We will ignore the atmosphere and greenhouse gases in this model. Our objective in this section is to explain how the climate system works by considering the simplified climate model illustrated here. Here is the question we are trying to answer in regard to the climate modeling. How does the flow of energy in and out of the Earth affect the temperature of the Earth? Let's start by talking about the climate model. Imagine that planets take in light only at short wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum from the sun, mostly in the visible region, and that planets emit light into space only at longer wavelengths, that is, in the thermal infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Sunlight is the source of energy coming into the planet. When the sun's energy reaches the earth, it is partially absorbed by different parts of the climate system. The absorbed energy is converted back to heat, which causes the earth to warm up and become habitable. The heat here is infrared light shining in all directions, which is how the energy leaves our planet. That is, the earth loses energy only through long wave radiation. Note that solar radiation absorption is uneven in both space and time. 
and this gives rise to the intricate patterns and seasonal variations of our climate. However, we will ignore this fact here and focus on global averages of temperatures. Let's talk about solar radiation in Earth. Most solar radiation makes it straight to the Earth's surface. 70% is absorbed at the Earth's surface and 30% is reflected back to space, which is albedo. Two things are happening here, absorption and reflection of sunlight. We get the visible light from the sun, then make heat on Earth, and the heat shines as infrared. Some sunlight gets reflected directly. This is albedo. This reflected sunlight does not enter into the Earth heat budget of the Earth. We have the fundamental principle of physics. Energy is conserved. Energy can be moved around, but cannot be destroyed. Incoming energy equals outgoing energy. In this model, we assume that the energy from the sun is balanced by the outgoing infrared radiation into space. In other words, the energy balance occurs when heating on the left-hand side equals cooling on the right-hand side. Or equivalently, when shortwave radiation on the right-hand side equals longwave radiation on the left-hand side. The term pi r squared is introduced in this equation to compensate for the fact that planets, including the Earth, are spherical, and their surfaces are tilted with respect to the incoming radiation. Note that solar radiation absorption is uneven in both space and time, and this gives rise to the intricate patterns and seasonal variations of our climate. However, we will ignore this fact here and focus on global averages of temperatures. How does the flowing of energy in and out of the Earth affect the temperature of the Earth? We've now arrived at our answer. Notice that the temperature resulting from the climate model without atmosphere is often referred to as the skin temperature. By plugging all the relevant parameters into the temperature equation for the terrestrial planets, that is, Venus, Mars, and Earth, the average or effective temperatures of these planets are given here. The Earth average temperature of minus 18 degrees Celsius, that is, 255 degrees Kelvin, is quite low. The actual average temperature of the Earth is 14.5 degrees Celsius. So is our climate model totally wrong? No, it's just incomplete. We need to include the atmosphere in this model. Or without the greenhouse effect, the average surface temperature of the Earth would be around minus 18 degrees Celsius. The greenhouse effect refers to the farming practice of warming garden plots by covering them with a glass or plastic enclosure. Note the variability of solar output will not help us here. Solar constant varies over an 11 year sunspot cycle. This variation is around 0.07% over an 11 year period. The effect on global temperatures is about 0.2 degrees Kelvin, an extremely small variation. Let's continue our discussion about the climate system by including the atmosphere in our model, but we will still ignore greenhouse gases. The Earth includes the atmosphere. So what effect does the atmosphere have on the Earth's temperature? Electromagnetic waves in the visible spectrum 
penetrate the atmosphere. Electromagnetic waves in the infrared spectrum are absorbed by the atmosphere. The atmosphere is a black body and hence emits radiation. The atmosphere radiates equally in all directions, as you can see in the following illustration. We can construct a very simple model of an absorbing atmosphere as follows. The incoming shortwave radiation, after removing the reflected component, is transmitted by the atmosphere and is all absorbed at the ground. The ground emits as a black body. The atmosphere absorbs all of this energy and re-emits energy as a black body from both surfaces, that is to space, and back to the ground. Here is an illustration of a simple one-layer model. In equation one, the energy balance for the atmosphere, which consists of infrared light, is as follows. In equation two, the energy balance for the ground, which is visible light from the sun and infrared from the ground and atmosphere, is as follows. The energy budget equations are solved for the two temperatures as follows. Here is the skin temperature formula. By plugging all the relevant parameters into the temperature equation for the terrestrial planets, that is, Venus, Mars, and Earth in the previous slide, the average or effective temperatures of these planets are given here. This time it is too warm. The new ground temperature is about 26.85 degrees Celsius. The actual average temperature on the Earth is about 14.5 degrees Celsius. The new ground temperature is about 45 degrees Celsius more than for a planet without an atmosphere. The Earth's surface now receives not only the net solar radiation, but infrared from the atmosphere as well. Because the surface feels more incoming radiation than if the atmosphere were not present or were completely transparent to infrared, it becomes warmer than in the climate model without atmosphere. This process is valid for the Earth and for other planets, such as Venus and Mars. The greenhouse effect is needed. Remember, there is a large selection of iMode education lectures which can further enhance your knowledge of earthquakes, volcanoes, climate, and energy. Thank you for listening to this IMO Education Lecture.